Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've seen lots of examples of what series and parallel RCL circuits look like and how to solve for the currents and the voltages inside those circuits. Now what we'll find out is that not all circuits are purely RCL and or I should say series RCL or parallel RCL circuits. Some of them don't fit any of those particular categories. We call them more general type circuits and yes they're also second order and we also of course have to find the current and the voltage equations for those. Now when they're not purely series or parallel circuits we need to follow kind of the same principle but there's some major differences between them so let's point that out. So first of all we need to find the voltage and the current before time equals zero and then find the voltage and the current after time equals zero if there's a subtle difference between them. Typically they're the same across that boundary but we do have to look at the circuit and here's an example circuit of what that might look like. The switch closes, notice that we have a capacitor here in parallel with the resistor but then this, the parallel branch, is in series with the inductor and this resistor so it's neither a purely series or purely parallel circuit. So when that happens we need to figure out the initial voltage before and after time equals zero and then we have to determine the initial current through the capacitor, we have to find the final current through the inductor, and we have to find the final voltage across the capacitor. We will make use of these two equations, ICL and VL, so in other words the current through the capacitor and the voltage across the inductor in terms of their two equations. Once we've done that, we then have to use the KCL and the KVL the current loop and the voltage loop of the Kirchhoff's rules and use those equations to find the differential equation. You'll find out that the differential equation that we find for these types of circuits tend to be unique. They're not exactly the same as a purely series or a purely parallel circuit. So we'll have to figure out what that differential equation is and solve that differential equation. We won't automatically have the solution. We will not automatically figure out what S1 and S2 is because we're not going to know automatically what the alpha is in particular and maybe the omega sub not as well. So we need to figure out what those things are and come up with the differential equation and solve it. Of course we will do that by using the characteristic equation, we have to set it in the right format and then once we establish what the alpha and the omega is, because they may be unique for that particular circuit, then once you find that you can find the solution to the voltage. Again we'll have either an underdamped, a critically damped or an overdamped case. If that's the case then of course once we have the equation then we have to come up with the constants A1 and A2. Typically we use A and B because that's easier to deal with than the subs subscripts 1 and 2. Then of course we need to use V sub naught and dV dt when time equals zero to find out what these constants are. So that technique is pretty well the same as what we've seen before. Once we establish the solution to the voltage as a function of time, then we have to solve for current as a function of time. And yes, I should put as a function of time here. What we're going to do is start out by using the KCL equation that we found in the beginning here, solve that equation for the current, and then use the voltage and the dVdt to find the current. So in other words, we'll have to be able to replace the dVdt and V so that we have a purely equation for the current, and then of course we'll use this equation as well to set up an equation for the current rather than for the voltage. So I know this sounds pretty general and you may wonder well what in the world is he talking about but you can see that the overall approach the overall approach is about the same and it turns out that the big difference is that you'll have to find the particular differential equation for the particular circuit and now solve that in the way you know how. So I guess you'll want to see some examples of that and we'll have some examples ready in the videos to come. She had the part, didn't she? She did. <laughs> she heard something or saw something. 